they do. I think it's really critical that you understand that everybody wants to grow their business and we all go through different phases, right? Just like human beings go through phases. You know, you, you give birth to your business and you're an infant and an infant is a run for survival and cash flow problems are a natural process in most cases and you're running. Hopefully you get to a teenager where now cash flow is not a problem, you're growing like crazy and then you have a new problem, you don't have systems in place. And maybe you get to young adult where you have to decide what you're not going to do. Eventually, hopefully you get to prime where you're growing your business revenues and you're growing your profits and you've got a professional organization and you're not doing it. Because as long as you're doing it, really you don't have a business. What you have is you're self-employed. There's nothing wrong with being self-employed. But there, whenever you meet someone who's in business is stressed, they're always a business operator. And my focus is to become a business owner. How do you do that? You realize that the chokehold on the growth of your business is always the leader. And it's your skills and it's your psychology. And I found it's 80% psychology and 20% skills. You gotta have the marketing skills. You gotta be able to lead. You gotta be able to recruit. You gotta do all those things. But really, most importantly, you gotta get it through what I call the threshold of control. When you realize that your problem is not a lack of resources, it's not a lack of money or technology or contacts, it's not. It's your psychology. Because the ultimate resource is resourcefulness. And human emotion, that's what starts wars, that's what makes a business begin, that's how you have children, that's how we end wars, it's all emotion. And so what I really learned to do is how to manage my emotions. So, you know, once you solve that one, the next one shows up. I had somebody, I started a franchise and a couple franchisees were really upset when one of the people representing on my side said they didn't make things clear to them. And you know, it's all bullshit, but it cost me $5 million in four years. I thought the first one was like a $50,000 challenge. Now I got a $5 million challenge. And I took all the money I'd saved in my entire career to pay that off, and I was starting over again. And then I grew from that. And then I finally got, you know, to, I had a partner in business, and long story short, they had a business that was losing a million dollars a day, and he turned it around and making 1.8 billion in EBITDA. He offered me his partner, and I signed a document saying, we're all joint and several. There was 40 million in debt. I figured I had 10 million of the debt to have a million, eight, 1.8 billion in infrastructure. And it turned out my partners, uh, two of them were broke. They weren't billionaires. They had lost their money. And the other one was the son of a billionaire and his dad had given him nothing at $5 million to his name. So I was on the hook shortly after for $120 million when I didn't have $120 million. I figured out how to deal with that. By doing that, I eventually took my companies to this year, will surpass $6 billion in 33 companies because I made it through the threshold of control. So I want you to know when you see these big numbers by any entrepreneur, they all started with blocking and tackling, and they all started with how do I get both the skill and more importantly, the psychology. You can get the skill if you can get that part of you that just doesn't die, the part of you that finds the way to add more value than anybody else so you can keep growing. When you say, I don't have any idea whatsoever of what I'm going to do to pull this out. I've been in situations like that, where I had deadlines I had to meet. I didn't meet those deadlines, and I lost a car lost a home, uh, lights were cut off, telephone was cut off. All of those things are going to happen to you at different points in life. Now, the question is, what, what does it really mean? It really doesn't mean anything. It's not important at all. It's just a temporary inconvenience because all of those things can be corrected. And it's a part of the process that we all go through. Now, the challenge is, in the midst of all of these things, is one, to stay focused on your goal, and two, to keep your expectations of making it happen and keeping your energy positive and relentlessly looking for ways in order to pull it out. And I guarantee you that there will be some intervention. What causes it? I don't know. There are things that we don't know or understand, but we do know that if we do certain things, that things begin to happen that's in our favor, that shows that the universe is on our side. Everything that we're seeking, I believe that if we begin to align our thoughts with action and be relentless, don't try two or three things or 15 or 20 things, but a hundred things, 500 things if necessary, 10,000 things as Edison did, if necessary, until we find a way out. Many of us, we eliminate many possibilities for ourselves because we really don't do all we can do. I think A.O. Williams was right when he said, all we can do is all we can do.
and all we can do is enough. And I think, honestly speaking, even judging from myself, and I think that my commitment is stronger than most people. But if I had to literally measure my, my commitment in terms of what I've put forth in my dream, I would say that I might have given about 18 to 20 percent of what I'm really capable of. As high in consciousness as I believe that I am, comparatively speaking, where I used to be, I'm still nowhere near reaching 50% of the commitment that I can make to accelerate the growth and the development of my dream and the manifestation of the things that I know within myself that I'm capable of producing. So our biggest challenge is beginning to look at within ourselves to remove those energy blocks because if we're not producing the income that we want let us not look outside of ourselves but look within ourselves to find out how am I blocking me am I really giving it all that I have I have uh, am I really being as creative as I can be am I really unstoppable am I as relentless as I can be am I exhausting every means possible am I turning up every rock to find what it is that I'm looking for. That what resides between our ears, when we're thinking about how do I come up with $500, $1,200, or $2,000, is the same gray matter that resides between the ears of a Ross Perot or Donald Trump when his bankers say, you've got 30 days. How is it that one man or woman can do it and do a million times more than these other people and the other ones don't. It has to be consciousness. It has to be. And when we talk about consciousness, we're talking about a collection of our thoughts, our feelings, and our emotions and experiences used as an active force to produce in our lives that which we want to produce. Because everything that exists in life, the microphones that we're speaking in, the shoes that we have on our feet, the chairs that we're sitting in, the clothes that we're wearing, the homes that we live in, the cars that we drive, all of that came out of our consciousness. That all came out of the invisible into the visible. And man was the vehicle, the, the outlet to produce that. Wherever we have stopped in our dream, we stopped at a place called willingness. Anybody that has fallen short of their goals, they ran into something that they were not willing to handle. Because in order to reach your dream, in order to make things happen, there must be a willingness to do what is required. You don't have to worry about the winds that will most certainly blow around you, the obstacles, the negativity that will stand in your way. You don't have to worry about what other people will say. You just have to keep your mind on your course. Those winds may blow fast and furious, but if you know your path, if you know where you are going, they will help push you toward the dreams and goals and treasures that you have already decided you're going after. Your goals will push you forward, ahead of the stormy weather. To be a good person, you have to have ambition. You have to try to do something good with your life. You have to try to get out of where you are today or make where you are a better place tomorrow.